Network is brought to you by our sponsors. Visit and let them know you heard about them here on the Awakened Radio Network. Do you have health and medical problems the regular medical system cannot seem to figure out how to fix? If the answer is yes, then check out RifeEnergyMedicine.com. That is Rife spelled R-I-F-E, RifeEnergyMedicine.com for a new way to approach many of your health problems, RifeEnergyMedicine.com. Are you looking for a fun and easy and productive way to promote and advertise your personally owned business? If so, the Awakened Radio Network just might have the solution for you. Visit awakenradio.net and look up under our products and services tab. Or add Awakened Radio to your Skype contact and send Donna Devane, the station owner, a message. Or you can add uh, Donna Devane at gmail.com to your email contact and send Donna an email letting her know that you would like to set a time to go over how to advertise your business in a way that makes getting sales easy without the struggle and a whole lot of fun. Do you have a message, something that just burns within you that you couldn't stop talking about even if someone someone offered to pay you to? Well, you just might be the type of host that we're looking for here on the Awakened Radio Network. Add Awakened Radio to your Skype contacts or send Donna Devane, the station owner, a message, DonnaDevane at gmail.com. And let's set up the time to talk and see if you and Awakened Radio Network are on the same consciousness wavelength. We might can work together and provide a win-win where your message goes out on our airwaves, reaching our global listeners, bringing fun, self-growth, and a whole lot of excitement to both your life and the Awakened Radio family. Welcome to Evolutionary Women Radio Show with Pernilla Little Rose, where authentic feminine power is making a difference in the world. Hello everyone and welcome. Happy Tuesday morning here in California. Welcome to Evolutionary Women Radio. I'm delighted to be here with you again today, and uh, even though I thought this would be the last show, it's actually not. (laughs) That's how it goes sometimes, when you just listen in, you move along, and you just don't know where you're going. But that's exactly what I'll be talking about today, because I think it's something that we all are in touch with all the time. No, I don't think that. I know that. And it's just a matter of learning how to live that. And that's why today's uh, talk is going to be about the mystery, living the mystery, and what does it take to live the mystery. Uh, Before we dive in, I always invite you to connect with me. You can call in if you want, if you have questions or anything you would like to share that relates to what we're talking about. And that number is 334-649-7204. And, of course, you know I love to hear from you in the chat room. So if you want to send me a little chat and say hello, I will say hello back to you, and uh, maybe we can chat a little bit somehow. Anyway, I hope you're all having a beautiful day. Uh, I know the weather is changing here uh, quite a bit. We are moving into fall. The days are still so beautiful, and the mornings, the nights and mornings are very, very cold. It's almost down to freezing, and then it changes during the day when we get into the 90s, 90s even. So 
it's amazing. It's so beautiful out there, and it just really reflects the mystery, the life. It, nature just reflects it back to us in such a beautiful, clear, clean way. And I think nature is a beautiful teacher for us to really live the mystery, live in the moment, be here, be with what is, allow everything to be as it is. You know, the trees that I'm surrounded by, they're not trying to change the, the neighbor tree, saying it should be different, taller, shorter, you know, you're, you're shading my, my branches, move over. <laughs> it just shoots up above or it curves a little bit or it adjusts. It adjusts to life. And we can do that too without compromising ourselves though. That is the tricky thing, that a tree doesn't compromise itself. It just does what it does. It is what it is. And we have a tendency to compromise our natural expression and unfolding. And many times it's because we are afraid that we are going to hurt or disappoint someone if we don't do what they want us to do or express ourselves in a way that everybody else does and of course in the long run it's never going to bring us fulfillment or happiness or anything we want in life we just keep circling around in resisting who we truly are uh, suppressing what I would call the felt sense the felt sense of the mystery like the the guiding uh, apparatus that is inside of us that kind of moves us through life if and when we only let it so when we're going to talk about living the mystery today and what it takes I would say what it takes to live that mystery is a, a full-on dedication to wanting to live the mystery. It takes some kind of surrender into the longing that this is what we want. This is what you long for, living the mystery. And then it takes a lot of vigilance to keep coming back to that dedication or commitment. It's something deep inside of us that tells us that this is what I want. I want to live a life where I am devoted and dedicated to the truth that I am, to the truth that manifests as me, that is beyond my thoughts, my feelings, my thinking, my beliefs. It's something deeper. And once you are uh, touched by that longing, once you are starting to feel <clears throat> that there is something in your heart, in your being, that longs for a different life, a better life, a more expansive life, something that you will notice is in resonance with your core values with what deeply matters to you something that you know is possible and that will make your life and everybody else's life much much better that's the that's the transition we are living in as we are moving from the old paradigm into the new we're we're learning to find out, well, what does it mean to live in this new paradigm that so many of us are touching in on? And in my experience, it's very much tuning in to the energies of something new that wants to take birth in and as and through each of us, both individually and collectively. So it's an energy that's here, we're all tapping into, 
and it may have a different flavor and expression for each of us, even though there are a lot of similarities inside of it, such as um, togetherness, love, uh, food for all, social justice, clean air, good food, um, health, health, good health. There, There's something inside of us that is being driven towards the betterment of our human life, all of our lives, not just me, me, me anymore. It's not just about me getting ahead and me being successful and me making money and all these expressions that are from the old paradigm there is something else that is stirring in many of us and the show here has been very much to support you in trusting that and help you realize that yes you can trust this yes this is exactly what wants to happen, what is happening, and you can start listening to that. You're not alone in this. You're not just the, the lone ranger who's moving ahead uh, in on a diff, totally different path than anybody else, although it may feel like that sometimes because a lot of the people that you may still be surrounding yourself with may not... Um, may not be aware of that yet you know they may still be so identified with the old paradigm that you may feel like the lone wolf or the lone ranger because you're different and that is exactly why you can tune in here on evolutionary women radio because here we meet with other like-hearted women who experience the same and that will give you the confidence to trust what you actually already know. So there we go. And here is a lovely message from Dove and Butterfly again. Hello my dear and thank you so much for chatting in and I love you too and I love that you're here and um, and just come and say hello. It makes me so happy. Just want you to know that. So, um, and how does that relate to the mystery, how this new energy? Well, they're not really separate because the mystery expresses itself all the time. And our task is to start tuning in to how that mystery naturally moves when we learn to listen, when we learn to stop resisting and doubting it or even undermining it when we really learn to check in tune in connect to this energy and then start moving along with it now the the old paradigm that we are moving out of was very much based in knowing something and like I just said, it was about being better, being successful. You know, it was about me, 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 very much um, to the exclusion of others. So let's just face it, we still have that in us because that's very much a survival mechanism that we lived under, where we were separate, we felt separate, we believed we are separate, so of course we needed to take care of ourselves and do anything we could to survive. So that's still in us. But there's more. <laughs> there's a lot more. And part of that more is that this new energy that I call the new paradigm. You can really call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. As long as you know what your experience is with that, how do you know that there is something else inside of you that wants to take birth through you? So 
we are moving from this place in the old paradigm where we knew something or thought we knew something at least and in that knowing many times when we know something from a place of separateness there is like a contraction around it it's almost like we are holding on to our knowing for dear life we 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 do that because we think first of all that our survival uh, depends on it and that's our physical survival but it's more than that it's also our emotional and mental survival it's basically our identity that depends on our knowing something from that place the new knowing that we are moving into is different it's not like a grasping or holding on to something it is a moment to moment knowing what to do what not to do and then you just move with the moment to moment expression of the mystery and because you don't know what the next moment is going to bring you are always living in a place of not knowing and as you as you probably know <laughs> use that word a mystery is called a mystery because we do not know right it's a mystery it's like i don't know it's a mystery we use that term so in order to live in and as the mystery itself and i i write that with a capital m that's when you start living in the unknown in a conscious way it's learning to embrace the fact that you do not know and it can be scary to all the parts that are used to feeling safe feeling secure and knowing that you will be okay so it's kind of a battle you know when we move into the new paradigm into the mystery and the unknowing known there there's going to be what feels like a battle between the part that wants to know and then the part that is ready to move into the unknown and that's the crossroad we're at how do you do that how do you suddenly embrace not knowing when you're so used to having to know having to know, am i going to be okay right am i going to be okay if i do this you know will people still like me if i don't say yes to everyone when i really want to say no am i going to be okay if me following the mystery inside by just tuning in moment to moment to how the mystery how my life wants to unfold when i listen to it am i going to be okay if i disappoint other people by not doing it their way anymore and those are the questions those are the the questions if they're not fully seen through and felt into those are what hold us back and keep us in the old paradigm where at least we are like everyone else right we that feels safe it it may not feel good but at least it feels safe so we still have a lot of investment in feeling safe and it's totally okay you know it's all we have known for so long so let's not make ourselves wrong for that let's just see that that is how it is and what i use a lot if i can use the word use uh to help soften these contractions is frequently going inside and frequent meditations sometimes a meditation can just be 30 seconds or a minute or at some point maybe 5 minutes it's a it's a matter of learning to listen to the felt sense or the movement the energy movement um in your body 
And the more you get used to that, the easier it is. <clears throat> you don't need to go in to meditate or tune in so long if you are going in for guidance. Just sitting in the silence, meditating, in itself is, is a very strong solvent. It's your learning to drop into a deeper part of yourself which is both the solution to all the contractions and it's also the solvent that helps the contractions soften, dissolve. So frequently stopping, pausing, going inside, checking in with yourself and just just feel in, you know, feel into yourself and then am I am I living my own life right now? Am I in tune with my movement? You know, if you imagine yourself as a wave, like I've talked about so often, if you imagine yourself as a wave, you know, you can check in, is my wave rolling freely in the direction that it wants to go? Or am I trying to force a wave that has a lot of energy behind it into a different direction, which is pretty much impossible. And that's where all your struggle and efforting comes from, by trying to direct a wave, sometimes a tsunami. <laughs> and it's impossible. And sometimes, like I said before, too, is you know we try and live uh, on somebody else's wave, and um, it's just not going to work because we each have our own way. The mystery has a perfectly created, expressive way for you and me, individually, differently. That is, That will make us feel fulfilled and happy and, and feel like, oh, now I am doing or being what I came here to do or be. It's, it, there's a match in resonance. There, there's a match in, um, there's kind of a feeling of, oh, this is, this is it. You, you'll feel it in your body. And I can't ex explain exactly to you what that feels like. We, we used some terms last time. It's like there is a feeling of expansion. There is a feeling of relaxing, of resting, of um, taking a deep breath. That's, those are kind of signs that you are on your own wavelength. You're on your own wave. You are on the wave of the mystery that is living your life. It's only when we try and resist it and go away from it that we start feeling separate and try. Then we get into the struggle, holding on, you know, trying to do something to survive, to make it. That's when we leave the wave and think we need to do it on our own. So it's le really learning to come back to your wave and learn to ride it. And that's, that's the learning. And that's a lifelong learning, you know. It, it's, it's going much faster now than when I started back when. But it still it takes time. And we just need to be willing to take the time that it needs and not keep trying to push the wave ahead of itself. Because you can't. <laughs> it's really learning to know and trust that your wave, your movement inside, when you're tuned into it, knows exactly where to go and what's going to make you fulfilled. Because in truth, you are the wave. It's not a separate thing. It's who you are. And it's so it's learning to be you and move with the mo the movement and the energy that you are. So that's that's really learning to live in and as the mystery where you do not know. The question is, are you willing to take a step into the unknown and find out what happens? If you just for a moment let go of all the things that you know or want to know or think you know, whatever it is, just for a moment give yourself some space and let yourself not know. And it, it may be difficult in the beginning. I'm not saying it's easy. It, it's not easy because it's a new way of being. 
But this is where we can start dissolving all that hardness that we are living by and um, start expanding into the mystery and the unknown and just learning. There, there, there's like a curiosity in it. Like, well, what, what would it be like to live in the unknown. If you ask yourself that question with a curiosity, then you might open up a little more because instead of being afraid of it, you can get a little excited about it even or at least curious, you know, if, if that is a, if that's the first step just to spark a little curiosity in you to find out, well, what is it like to live in and as the mystery or what is it lit is like When I don't know, if I just suspend my knowing, what happens then? That's just a mini step. You can do it for 20 seconds or a minute and just find out, wow. And you might notice that your mind keeps wanting to come in to let you know something. It may even, you know, tell you what you're doing, comment on what you're doing, and you'll start seeing how your mind is always wanting to know something or telling you something that you're supposed to know. And it's taking that step back instead of being in it and swirling around with it. You know, can you take a step back and just take a look at your mind, at the thoughts, at the contractions that think they need to know something? It's kind of a fun thing. Um, we are we have a few more minutes before the break, and after the break, I actually want to talk a, a little uh, deeper about you know how we how to actually how to do that, and um, and how to um, how to become that space of unknown of the unknown or the mystery, and how to realize that you already are it. And there is a little there is this little middle step that I'm going to guide you into after the break here. So uh, definitely stay tuned. And before we go on the break, I want to just invite you to explore some of the work that I offer in my uh, life outside of the radio. Uh, You can go to lillarose.com, which is spelled L-I-L-L-A-R-O-S-E. And I actually did read, uh, write a book about this uh, a number of years ago. And the book is called Imagine Being Kind to Yourself. And you can find more information about that on my website if you go uh, to the products, uh, services and product session, section, I think it's called. And you can also, I also have a CD set, a six CD set that will help you Uh, to meditate in order to learn to listen to this energy. So there are a lot of um, things that I offer that's going to make it easier for you to start accessing them. And these are just easy things. You can just buy a little book. You can buy it as a real book or a download. You can buy the download of the CDs or you can buy the CD set. But I do encourage you if you are... If you feel a little lost in how to do it, it's the how-to, right? We always look for the how-to. This is going to be very, very helpful for you. And um, if you want to work a little more with me, you can also, you can always sign up for a, a free discovery session where we spend 30 minutes on the phone together uh, to simply find out where you're at and where you want to go, what's what's preventing you from tuning into who you are and moving along, surfing your own wave. What is getting in your way? And then we can find out if we would be a good match to explore that further together. So, so I am offering a lot of uh, support because my vision is really for all of us to live our own truth to trust that and move through all the layers where we are contracted, where we feel traumatized and pain, scared. I help you move through that so you feel safe and you get to the other side with inspiration and aliveness and ready to surf your own wave. So check it out and uh, we will be back right after this break and continue this conversation. 
And now a word from our Awakened Radio sponsors. Do you have health and medical problems the regular medical system cannot seem to figure out how to fix? If the answer is yes, then check out RifeEnergyMedicine.com. That is Rife, spelled R-I-F-E, RifeEnergyMedicine.com, for a new way to approach many of your health problems. RifeEnergyMedicine.com. Check out Thrival with DonnaDevane.com. Find out all about the author, radio show host, life teacher and coach Donna Devane at Thrival with DonnaDevane.com. Be sure and check out her new Kindle books at Amazon.com. Awakened Radio is also brought to you by the Awakened Store right here at AwakenedRadio.net forward slash Awakened Store where you can find handcrafted jewelry, Native American dream catchers, smudge kits, medicine bags, hair feathers, books, audio guided meditations, and a whole lot more. Check us out at AwakenedRadio.net forward slash Awakened Store. Connect with the Awakened Radio host on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash Awakened Radio. We love hearing from our listeners. Take part in our fan page and share it with your friends. Let's have fun on the Awakened Radio Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash Welcome back to Evolutionary Women Radio, where authentic feminine power is making a difference in the world. Thank you for joining and listening. This is your host, Pranilla Little Rose, and this show is brought to you by Women Standing for Love. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back, my friends, to Evolutionary Women Radio, and this is your host, Pernilla Lillarose. I forgot to mention before that um, you can always listen to uh, the rebroadcast, not rebroadcast, the, the art in the archives, all the shows here on Awakened Radio are recorded, and you can go back to any one of them and listen to them. And I've been covering this subject in many different ways, saying it in different, you know, using different words, different images, different different analogies. Sometimes I say things that I go like, oh, where did that come from? I've never said it that way before. But when you start sharing it, it the mystery comes through with an, with an image that I could not have thought up myself. So... You can go to the archives here on Awakened Radio, and you can listen to the iTunes. It, could, it will take you to the iTunes, where they're all available for download. Or you can go to uh, another part of the iCar archives, where you can listen to them just on your computer outside of iTunes. So just please go to the the uh, the media section I think it is on their archives or it may be another tab anyway there is an archive in there with all the recordings and I very much invite you to go and check them out I think they will help you along the way on this journey that we're all going to so um, oh and then one last thing also if you go to uh, the forum on Awakened Radio, they're actually posted there. So if you just go to my name on the forum, uh, the, pa- the forum page, and look for Evolutionary Women Radio, all the old shows are posted there. So with a title, so you, it's easy to find it there. So I, I hope you will check that out if you want to take it a little deeper. 
Well, let's come back here to the mystery and what actually prevents us from living that mystery and what we can do to, to start uh, surfing our own wave. The way I see that all these contractions, um, it's almost like they are embedded into our consciousness. It's like there's little rocks and pebbles that are cemented into our consciousness. And that's why we see life differently than it is. We see it through the cement and the pebbles and the rocks that are cemented in. And those are all past experiences, maybe past traumas, hard times, things that we've seen happening in the world that we take in as uh, a belief that that we think is the, the full truth and then because it's painful we tend to contract around it we resist it because we don't know what else to do with it and it takes time to connect with these rocks and pebbles and find out what they are because some of them are cemented in pretty darn deep and um, we don't even know that they're there the first thing we need to do, of course, is becoming aware of them. And the body is a wonderful instrument to help you get in touch with these contractions. The, the contractions are experienced in your body, in your psyche, in your mind, in your heart, as something that's uncomfortable. There's discomfort. There's contraction, tension, pain, heaviness. Those are things that you experience in your body. And those I call, in this show today, I haven't used that before. I think that's why I'm saying sometimes I say things that surprise me. But they're experienced as this, it's like a cement block that is just hardened. And it is simply the hardening is our resistance to experiencing what is really there because we do not know how to do it. The only thing we know is to resist it and try and get rid of it. And it doesn't work. But because we don't know how else to do it, we keep doing it. Now, I know for sure that it does take time to get them all out and to get to them all. And, and you cannot go in there with a hammer and try and break the cement to soften it. It doesn't work that way. It's it's different. You know, it's it's kind of like if you break a bone, it knits together stronger right where it was broken, right? And that's to prevent that it won't happen again at that place. So so it helps strengthen something that was weak. So if you go in and try and break the cement, there's a good chance that it's going to get even stronger to protect itself. You have to remember that the cement in your consciousness is there for a reason. It's the fear of being separate, alone, and needing to figure out how to survive. So it the cement, the hardness, the contraction, the pain, it's simply fear. And fear does not need a hammer. It does not need to be hammered. It will not help the fear. It's just going to make it more afraid. So it's going to contract even more, right? The cement gets harder. And whatever it is you're trying to get to in your consciousness is going to get embedded even deeper. So please do not use a hammer. Let's find some tools that work. And in my experience, I know that fear needs to feel safe. And I feel safe when I'm surrounded by kindness and love and lack of judgment and lack of um, people wanting me to change. You know, if somebody wants me to change, there is an automatic resistance that, resistance that happens inside. It's, it's for most of us, unless 
it's brought to us in a way that feels safe and kind and loving because that is what it takes to loosen the grip. Harshness and hammers do not do it. Kindness and love are the solvents to help soften these scared cement blocks or these scared contractions that, you know, they're holding on for dear life. And we all have them in us. Some, some hold on stronger than others. Some have maybe more than others. Some have worked through some of these cement blocks because you've learned how to meet them. But harshness and hammers, please don't try it. And I know most of us try that for a while. We judge ourselves, you know, you should be beyond this. You, you know, I can't believe that's still here. You know, that's like going in there with a hammer. It's not going to work. And I know there are coaches who come in, you know, you just need to be committed and there's harshness and da-da-da-da-da. Now, I'm not saying that's not valuable, but it depends on where you are in your process. There are times where it's really good to say, you know what, that's enough. I'm not going to do that anymore. But that's, that's something you will know when you start listening to your own movement. Then you'll know when it's time to say enough is enough. And when it's time to really meet it with kindness, kindness, and, and just allow it to be there, right? So you're not coming in trying to change it. You're coming in just allowing it. Today I want to use the, the, <laughs> the example of using, it's like putting it into the washing machine. Put it on frequent cycles of kindness and love. And if you put that cement into a washing machine and put the, put the, <laughs> the solvent, the, the detergent in there made up of kindness and love and allowing, you will notice that when it has gone through a number of cycles, it's going to come out soft and yummy and malleable. So that's, that's what I want to keep bringing back to all of us. And it includes myself because this is a lifelong process to keep meeting all the hard places in us, all the cement in us, with a solvent that helps soften so we can start moving into the mystery. So you can, it's, it's like living in the mystery or living in the unknown. That's when the grip or the hardness of the cement is dissolved, is dissolving, I should say, and dissolved. Because then you are just flowing with the mystery in the unknown. You're not trying to grasp anything. You're not trying to hold on to anything. Or you're certainly not trying to get rid of anything. So let's just take a few minutes here. And I want to invite you to think of something or actually not even think of something. Well, you might think of something. There, if there's something in your life that is troubling you, something that's just not right, that makes you unhappy, and that you feel the impact of in your body as some kind of a contraction, or it could be a speedy energy, you know, a rushness, or a heaviness, or a pain, tension. If you go into your body and just by taking a deep breath in and just do a little scan of your body and see if there are any areas that are calling your attention. You know, it could be a headache. It could be a pain in your neck. It could be a tension or a discomfort in your belly. It could be anything. But it's something that wants your attention. And I know I've done this before, and I will probably do it forever. But right now, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to take a breath into that area, into that discomfort. Take a kind breath. 
It's different from the breath that says, Go away. I don't want you here. What are you doing here? That's not the kind of breath. You want to just find a kind breath and breathe into that area in your body. And it's as if you just say hello. You can kiss it hello if you can take that step or just say hello. It's so different than what you normally do. And and in this, you're actually creating a space of allowing. You allow this tension or this discomfort to be there instead of trying to get rid of it or resist it. And this this place of allowing, this is everything. It's it's really everything. Without that, you will probably go between the cycles of resisting it, uh, believing it, getting lost in it, hating it, um, rejecting it, all these things. So the space of allowing is in between all of that. And when you just allow it to be here, the mind is going to be challenged because it wants to know how am I going to get rid of this? I need to know. You see, that's where you try to know something. But when you just allow it to be there for now, you'll notice that you don't know how to change it because there is always going to be a natural part of us that wants to get rid of pain and discomfort. Nothing wrong with that. That's okay. See, I'm... I'm not against knowing something, but I'm certainly also not against not knowing. So can we learn to allow both to be there? But for now, let's just keep breathing into this area, and all you need to do right now is just let it be there. Just allow it. It's like take your hands off. If your hands were in there trying to change it, or if your hands were in there trying to push it away or press it down, whatever whatever your energetic hands were doing, so just take them off. Take your hands off for a moment and just let it be there, whatever it is in your experience. And let's hang there for a moment. Let it be there. Notice it. You can start listening a little bit and pay attention to this thing that's causing you discomfort. What happens when you just allow it, when it feels that the pressure is off? You breathe into it. What happens? What do you notice? And what, what are you learning from this place, from this part of you that was trying, you were trying to get rid of? And there's two parts here. First of all, there's the part that you've been trying to get rid of, whatever that is. And now you allow it. So there's that part that is free from the resistance and the pressure. And it just has a space to just be. Just be. And then the other part is that there is this part of you that allows it. So there's an active allowing where before there was an active resistance. Now there's an active allowing. So you can start paying attention to that part too. What is it in you that is allowing and listening and observing? What is that? Can you rest back into this observer or this this part that allows? Can you rest back into yourself? 
And as you're observing this, what you call discomfort that you are resisting, can you now observe that part that's observing? Can you kind of rest back into that? And the more you do that, the more you rest back into observing and allowing instead of trying to get rid of. You create more and more space. That is the solvent. This little process that seems like nothing is really everything. So you rest back into your own, I call it sometimes the ocean of allowing. You become the ocean that allows everything. Because oceans do that. They allow currents, they allow fish, they allow dolphins and whales and uh, seaweed and everything in between. It's all allowed. It just rests back into itself. And you can do that too. It's that same it's that same space, spaciousness, so just allow. And if you can take this up as a little practice by just allowing the mystery to unfold when you take off your hands, you will start noticing that this contraction is either going to start speaking to you and tell you that you may not be on your own ways, that you have left the mystery, that you've been trying to, you know, to make and force things to happen. Or, and, or, <laughs> you may notice that this contraction starts to dissolve and something starts to relax. And then again, anything in between. It's a matter of you starting to observe, allow, and just let it be. Just see what happens. And then keep resting back into the, the allowing, the mystery, uh, the observer that you are. That will be... Um, something I would invite you to play with and that's all you don't need to do anything more if, if you start just becoming that space of allowing your life will actually change quite dramatically but it needs to become a practice because if you if you learn to do that you know every day I w at some point every moment because it becomes just a natural space it's, it's your natural beingness so instead of leaving your being, now you're resting as your being, and then, then you can observe more and allow more and listen to the flow inside of you, how it wants to move, right? So instead of going against it, now you go with your own flow, and things express and unfold much more gracefully, much less effort, and with more fun, enjoyment, and, and peace. So... Give it a try. It's, it's absolutely worth it. Um, and it takes practice. And, and if you need some support from me, please go to my website at lilarose.com. And you can find a lot of goodies there that are available. Now, how does that relate to uh, my radio show here? Well, I have been listening to this movement inside that just wanted to pull back and go inside and do less and more allowing things to happen where I felt I had been a little bit too much into trying to make it happen even though it's been a, a natural flow at the same time you know it's been kind of both so here I've been following the movement to go back in and, and maybe stop you know take a break from it all or whatever and that and really following and trusting that movement that's what my life has been about for a long time. So here, here it is. And then another movement happened a week ago when I met, I went to this talk by um, a, a wonderful man uh, that you all may know about. Uh, his name is Daniel Sheehan. And uh, he's a quite well-known civil rights attorney. And uh, his wife, Sarah, was there too, and I connected with her. And I just felt a strong movement to invite her to be a guest on my show. And she couldn't make tonight, or today, not tonight, today's show. She was out of town. Uh, but she would, she would like to. So 
uh, I just thought, okay, here's here's another wave coming in, and I'm just following it and trusting it. So I don't know how long this is going to continue, and it may I may be just in a not knowing and just taking one month at a time, uh, and just following, just following, just following. Even though it may seem like crazy to to some people, you know, it doesn't matter. I know that the most important thing in my life is to be surfing my own wave, no matter what direction, no matter what pace, even if it needs to stop for a while or go go down into the ocean and come back up. I don't know because I live in the unknowing. I live in and as the mystery to the best of my ability. There are certain areas where I can improve on it, but that's okay. That's just part of it. So, so that's why for now I'm going to uh, offer uh, four more broadcasts, and in those four more weeks we'll see what unfolds next. <laughs> so I'm living the mystery, and I'm sharing with you that I really don't know where this wants to go. You know, there was a time where I felt like, yeah, I know this is what I'm doing, you know. Right now, I don't even know if that's what I'm doing. And I can take that step. I can trust that. And if it suddenly says stop, the the way stops, then I just stop because I don't know why it stops, but it's really none of my business in a way. My business is to listen to it and to follow it. And uh, that's really fun. The more I do this and the more you do this, you get more comfortable with it and you start enjoying more that it's okay to live in the unknown. And it is safe. It, it's not like something bad will happen because your wave is not out here to crash. It's out here. For, it's here for you to help you get a fulfilled life that you long for deep in your heart. Because the longing in your heart, that is the mystery that guides your way. So with that, my friends, um, I want to let you know, I'm not sure when uh, Sarah is coming on. Um, It might be next week or the following, but I will uh, let you know if you stay connected with me. You can always uh, put in your name and your email address on my website, and then you will uh, receive my um, e-zine when I send them out with the information. So um, remember to go on my website, check out some more things. Uh, I am the author of the book called Imagine Being Kind to Yourself. That's all about learning how to uh, make use of the solvent of kindness and love. And, um, yeah, so I will be back here next week. I don't know if I'm going to be with a guest or not, but, you know, that's the mystery. I don't know, and I'm okay with that. So it's been wonderful to be here with you as always. I really do enjoy these shows, and it's, it's just so great to have a place to share a message that is so deep in my heart and um, that I just wish for all of us to live. And then we'll create a world that we all love because we'll all be riding our own wave and have an exhilarating ride through life on our own wave. No crashing, but fun, laughter, and love. All right, my friends, uh, I will be with you in a week, and I wish you all a beautiful day. Many blessings. Even through the fighting life, we're all as open, showing our inside and life's so bright. We are awakened, come and join our love, it's so, so right. If you could feel what we feel now, you'd be a leader filled with might. Cause we're awakened, you won't catch us sleeping through the fighting life. We're all as open, showing our inside and life's so bright. Thank you for listening to the Awakened Radio Network at awakenedradio.net, where we invite you to join us for the prosperity game. You can win prizes. You can also discover the easy, quick, surefire ways 
to allow prosperity into your life experience. The Prosperity Games are ongoing on the Awakened Radio Network. Check out our front page, awakenedradio.net, for details on the Prosperity Games. You can win prizes by calling in, by being in our chat room. You can even win by leaving comments in our forum. We've got all manner of ways for you to join us to play the prosperity game where we all win and live beautiful, wonderful, on-purpose lives.